Cities readers, my name is Laura Harvey and I am the editor of Smart Cities News. Today I'm joined by Joshua Sattler, who is the General Manager, Innovation, Growth and Development Services at City of Darwin. In recent years, City of Darwin have taken a really proactive approach to smartening up their city through a range of initiatives and programs. Today with Josh, we're going to chat about two initiatives in particular the My Darwin City Voucher Scheme and the rollout of e-scooters in Darwin CBD and surrounds. Both of these projects have had a really positive impact on the local community, but let's get stuck into learning a bit more about these initiatives and Josh's advice for other councils considering schemes like this. So Josh, I wanted to start today by talking about the My Darwin Voucher Scheme, which saw almost $650,000 invested to encourage residents to spend in local Darwin owned businesses. Can you tell us a little bit about the origins of this program and how you got it from concept to delivery? Yeah, thank you. And, and um, from our perspective, the My Darwin platform represents a completely contactless um, transaction between consumers and merchants or businesses. Uh, from our perspective, in the early days, we were looking at how we can actually stimulate the economy. Um, in Darwin, we're a, a really well-off council as far as revenue streams and and we always seem to go out with a free, free park car parking initiative. Um, and then the concept was brought to the table to the elected members to, this, to try and decide how we can actually better utilize and leverage um, the amount of money we give in free parking. And, and this can be monthly up to $200,000. So, um, you know, the team got together and myself and we architected a, an initiative for my Darwin and um, re reappropriated those monies uh, with a decision from council uh, into the initiative where we saw a six time multiplier associated um, with the spend. So we put in $650,000 over, I think it was about five or six weeks. Um, and we were able to achieve approximately $4 million of economic stimulus to the identified sectors and business partners within the, within the initiative. And now this is blown up and now all of a sudden it's um, you know, going across the nation quite rapidly. And so it should because it's been one of those initiatives which actually worked and the data tells us it worked. So it's been really, really good to see it to actually come to fruition. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm imagining for all of the um, business owners that got involved, it was you know, an extremely positive response from all of them. They must just be wrapped. Absolutely. So within a very short time frame, within two weeks, we had 400 businesses within Darwin uh, and 40,000 users. Um, so it was a huge uptake very, very quickly. And we, we often use the term isolation hibernation. So we cracked the back of it very, very quickly. And we were enabled to, to get businesses employing people again uh, within a matter of weeks. And for us, that was, that was the number one goal. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and something that's so important at the moment with, um, with what everyone's going through with coronavirus and with people being put on job seeker, job keeper, things like this that can actually stimulate the economy and stimulate um, businesses to actually hire new people. It's, it's just a, it's a win all round, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And we've proven it. So the data talks with this. It's not something we're just saying it works. It's not political. It actually works. It, economic, it makes a massive economic impact. Yeah, absolutely. And what are your plans for the scheme going forward? Because um, I believe it was in June and July that the initial um, the, that the initial period ran for. Um, funds have been allocated and exhausted now. I read the other day that there are plans to um, to invest some more funds in the scheme for the Christmas period. Is that right? Yeah, we recently got a decision on Tuesday night for another two hundred thousand to go in. So we'll go hat in hand to Chief Minister and ask to, to match that. So hopefully around the Christmas period this year, uh, we'll put another 400 into it, which will, which will get us close to 2.5, close to $3 million worth of, of stimulus over that period, which is traditionally quite quiet here in Darwin. So, um, you know, it's another great use of, of, of the platform and it's something we can, and as I said, it's a legacy platform. We can turn it on and off whenever we like um, and, and stimulate whenever we like as well. So, yeah, it's really interesting to see what happens moving forward. Yeah, no, it's a fascinating project. Um, and I did have another question on the topic. Um, what advice would you give to other councils who are interested in setting up similar schemes for their own council areas? Oh, look, for, for us, it's been a, for, you know, we use the term rapid data, okay? So instead of looking at things longitudinally, you can see actually how things are happening right now. And from, from our perspective and local governments, I'm, I'm sure because I've worked at a few across the nation, it's always hard to put your finger on the pulse with economic development, what businesses are doing what and how much, et cetera. For us, this was a great tool to have some lifetime information. This is how much this cafe is turning through with the My Darwin vouchers. Um, and then we can actually encourage the public to make an ethical decision about where they actually spend their money. Um, and that's been one of the really good, 
good facets of this, this initiative to have that rapid data and uh, to be able to share that with the community for them to make ethical decisions around where they want to go, where they want to purchase and what they want to purchase. Some data which we had originally um, showed that 40% of purchases made um, were impulse purchases. They weren't necessarily planned purchases and 30% of, of the purchases made were actually at shops that people hadn't been to before. Um, so that in itself is, is a great tool and a really important facet of information that we can draw out of the platform. And you know, other customizations which councils can use as well. You know, we're looking at paying rates early, offering a discount through the voucher scheme. Um, again, leveraging that discount, job licenses, et cetera. You can add on all these customizations relative and contextualized to your local government area, um, which is a really easy application to use. So, um, you know, I'd encourage every council to, to look at it moving forward and um, let's put it in place. And if you use it, great. If you don't, then you can turn it on off whenever you like. Yeah, yeah, that, that's obviously a key benefit of it. And I think what you just spoke about, about ethical decision making with your purchasing, I think that's so important to people now. It's really, you know, with everything that we've gone through this year, people are really interested in supporting their local communities and buying local and that sort of thing. So, you know, having an app that actually provides the tech to be able to do that in a really easy and meaningful way is something that consumers are looking for. So it's solving a number of um not problems, but it is, it's working on a number of fronts. Um, I did want to ask Josh, do you think it's the program has encouraged local residents to engage with local businesses in an ongoing way? Have you sort of had any, you know, either um, data evidence or sort of um, anecdotal evidence that people are sort of saying, you know, through the app, I discovered this business and I'm going to keep getting my coffee there or I'm going to keep going to this store to buy gifts. Have you had any experience with that? Yeah, definitely. And I think some of that data ingestion we've got from people going to new shops to spend uh, has, has been a, a, an indica indicator for that. And we've also heard, um, heard from the shop owners as well. So many of them have said they've seen new customers come in they haven't seen before, different nights of the week, which have actually been busier than others. Um, you know, the amount of money and how quickly it flows through the program is astonishing. Like within one day, I think our biggest day we had to go through the program with about $120,000 went out of the program as kitty in one day. Um, so yeah, and that was saturated across the multiple businesses. Um, so yeah, it's, it's that aspect of having that live time data, which enables us to say, okay, well, let's look at now a 48 hour replenishment rather than a 24 hour, just to slow it down a little bit for people to make more, more informed decisions based on what information we can provide them. Um, I know we want to get into the back, into the pockets of the business as quickly as possible. Um, but let's get some informed decision making associated with that spend. And I, and I think this program has enabled that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really exciting to see what happens. I know ACT uh, have got it just about ready to launch as well across the territory. There's other councils using it. We're in discussions across the nation and also globally with the platform. Um, so fingers crossed it, it continues on and, and, and creates that circular economy associated with what other revenue streams we can put into it to get a benefit for small business. I think it's been great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's just fantastic. And, um, you know, obviously I, I'm super keen to hear about more councils doing it and implementing it. Um, you know, the, the benefits speak for themselves, I think. Um, I'd like to shift the conversation now to your e-scooter program, which kicked off in January this year. So this program has seen you partner with Neuron to operate a 12 month trial of electric scooters. The scooters are available to hire in the Darwin CBD and surrounds, and there are approximately 250 scooters available for hire. First things first, 10 or so months into the program, how are you finding engagement with the trial? Oh, look, the sky hasn't fallen in and there hasn't been scooters thrown into the harbour or up in trees and all that sort of stuff, which we thought, you know, everyone was talking about it was going to happen. But um, you know, from our perspective, it's been really successful. And, and, and originally when we proposed it to council, the, the, for us, the, the biggest thing for us is to get some of that and uh, um, the economic consumption associated with how people move across the city and, you know, walking past or scooting past a shop, dropping in, having a look, grabbing a coffee. Um, so we've seen some really good consumption multipliers associated with those aspects. Um, and Neuron's been a perfect partner to work with. You know, it's always been a trial. We haven't had legislation uh, change. So it's an exemption under the existing act from a transport perspective from the Northern Territory. Um, so working quite closely with the Territory government to ensure this is successful. Um, so for, from our perspective, we're looking at where do we go to next? Um, and, and you know, at the moment we're sitting at about 350 scooters across um, uh, there's, there's two phases, moving into a third phase of rollout and area size. Um, but we've also got a report coming to council pretty soon about a different type of e-mobility, uh, which we're looking at in Darwin as well with our partner with Neuron. 
um, and a different model associated with you know what what is a what a licensed revenue model looks like should it be a contribution model back, back in uh, to to the city and 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 the shared partner network which they actually utilize um, so we're looking at different models so we do things differently up here and, and i think we've got the right one uh, which will pitch to council in the coming weeks to look at where we go to next but um, fantastic partner to work with um, the data that we get, again, we've got a whole heap of series of, of rapid data sets we ingest from, from the e-scooters, you know, live time monitoring where the scooters are, you know, travel routes, time frames, et cetera. Um, and they're really, they're, they're almost an experience maker within Darwin. Yeah, you know, if you've ever been to Darwin, it, it is quite hot, but that's why people like it. Um, but at some time, it's really hard to move around the city without looking like you just stepped out of the beach. Um, so the scooters have been a, a great functional mobility tool for us. And a lot of instances, they're quite, they're non, what we call non-purposeful rides. So it's not that last mile transport solution. It's yeah. just, just because someone wants to actually get around and see the city uh, without, yeah. a, you know, a, a, a sweat monster. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it sounds like you've got a fantastic test bed up there in Darwin to really actually trial some pretty interesting stuff. Um, and as you say, explore different options for delivery. And, and it sounds like you've got quite a lot of data that other councils could potentially learn from, I'm guessing. Absolutely, and I think that's that, 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 that slow movement where we go take local, local government and put it into a data-driven decision-making machine rather than just reacting to the one percenters that constantly email and get on the radio and complain. I think, you know, I, I'd hesitate, you know, the thought process around ever moving scooters out of this city, you know, up, upwards of 15,000 trips a week um, across Darwin, quite a small peninsula um, is, a, is a lot of trip movements and, and adding a different... Um, e-mobility to that at a later stage which we're, we're talking about at the moment um you know the amount of carbon emissions that we've seen off the road with 15,000 trips is enormous just in our little area in darwin which we don't really have a congestion issue uh, but we're already in front of it um, so yeah. it's, it's been a fantastic initiative yeah awesome um i'm interested to know what types of users you're seeing you um use the scooters and you did touch on it a little bit um you know i know that you have a variety of different models for accessing them obviously you can sort of hire them um, on an as needs basis but then there are plans to sort of um, access them by the week or by the month what are you finding with who's actually using them the, the scooters is it tourists is it locals is it a mix of both where does it kind of land Oh look, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a when and when the gates are open, it's a mix of both, obviously. But what we're finding is territorians are coming to Darwin for whatever they need to. They're, they're jumping on and just having a go anyway. So it's that non-purposeful experience uh, which has opened up some of those economic consumption multipliers across our CBD, which has been really attractive. Um, obviously, the most, the most busiest time is between that sort of three o'clock through to seven pm. Um, so people are finding their way from either their place of residence here down to a different restaurant getting back rather than driving um but yeah the, the use the use rates are really really high um and you know we see i see a lot of aged people on these scooters as well you know it's not just the young people that want to get from one pub to another pub at, at eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night um these are people that want to get around the city and, and read some of the information that's across the city and have a look at some of the 1.8 billion year old rocks which we've got on our foreshore um, these are some really interesting ways to get around the city without, you know, feeling like you've just run a marathon. So it, it's been it's been fantastic, and it's, it suits all people. Um, there's obviously the you know some of the instances we've had where they've been not used correctly, um, but but again, that's just something to work through as part of the trial. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, we did touch on it a little bit, but um, what do you think are some of the hallmarks of a community that could really benefit from e-scooters as a viable mobility option? Um, yeah, what, what sort of communities do you think could, could really look at implementing these and benefiting from them as well? And if you could sort of touch on that um, economic multiplier effect of the scooters as well, because I think that's really interesting. Like when we initially said, let's have a chat about the scooters, I was just purely thinking from a mobility perspective, but to hear that there's economic benefits as well is, is fantastic. Yeah, I think anywhere where there's, um, you know, from, from a coastal perspective, I think, you know, the, the, the great sort of platforms to launch these scooters in is where you've got to get from A to B that's not necessarily supported by a mass rapid transport system, or it's a quite clunky old public service, like you've either got to jump on a bus, get a cab or an Uber, to go one kilometre or two kilometres. I think where you've got a two kilometre stretch, where you can actually see a lot across the foreshore, uh, where you're gonna engage with different areas you would not necessarily have seen if you're on the transport system. I think these are real experience makers. I know Townsville just rolled out recently 
um, and there's a, a couple of other cities across like sort of foreshore cities um, I think could really benefit you know it's those little coffee shops those little those little you know corner in the wall sort of places you know yeah I think it really suits a you know a, a sophisticated way of getting around a city where you see and experience so much more um, but not necessarily it's always about that last mile transport which is the concept of scooters originally was to try and look at reducing carbon emissions and using electricity rather than petrol etc uh, etc et but the added benefits associated with this mechanism of transport that we've seen um, have enabled some real, some real experience making and even place making opportunities for cities where they've got those types of those areas. And then I think it's only going to get a bit better across Australia. The Gold Coast is primed, mm. um, you know, even, even if it's some areas across Melbourne, you know, you've got a great river city through Melbourne, it'd be a great, you know, you've seen it happen through Brisbane. Um, you know, I think there's really good um, aspects associated with just getting people back and about an easy way to get around. And it's not intrusive, it's singular. Um, there's, no, there's no means of you know, communicable disease transfer. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a really good option to, to apply very quickly. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. It's, um, it's really interesting to see the different perspectives that you've learned from actually taking the trial. Um, you know, and this, is, and this is the whole point of doing trials, isn't it? You know, you'll go in thinking that you know, there'll be a certain outcome, we might learn something different, and that's great to sort of have that data and to learn from it. Um, you touched on this a little bit before, um, but I did want to ask what your plans were for the scooters beyond the 12 month trial period, which is sort of due to end at the end of this year. You mentioned that you can't imagine Darwin without scooters. Is that sort of, um, is that an indication that they're here to stay? Oh, look, I would hand on heart say please, um, but obviously there's a decision that needs to be made around it with the two entities here, both council and, and territory government. Um, the reality is I think we'll move forward with another exemption for another 12 months uh, and, and then from there look at changing legislation to suit and everyone's in the same boat across Australia, um, personal mobility devices and making sure they're compliant with legislation is just another thing we need to actually uh, build up to but in a, trial, in a trial world it's really easy to pull the bandit off and say no you've got to change this and, and work with your provider so that's served us really well um, and the other modes you know electric bikes uh, where that takes them to a car sharing, what was seen in Singapore with the blue model. Um, these are all things that will slowly bolt on for the conscious consumer to make the decisions, which you know keep our cities cooler, keep the congestion out of the way, etc., and reduce some of the impacts associated with actually ownership. Um, you know, car ownership's a big question these days, and if you can transfer that into a, a group model or a higher as you need model. Uh, I think it serves our cities up to, for rapid expansion a lot quicker than everyone saying, "No, I need my own." Know, Ford LTD V8 that I need to park in my own private space downstairs. Uh, that's a thing of the past. Uh, I yeah. think there's a, there's a great shift happening and uh, sometimes we just need to, to get out of the way and, and support it and let it happen. I think we've done that right here in the Territory. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, Josh, thanks so much for joining us today to have a bit of a chat about the My Darwin scheme and the e-scooters. Um, I know that there's lots that um, fellow um, council employees will be able to take from this chat and um, lots that they'd be able to look at implementing in their own environments. Before we finish up, do you have any other um, initiatives that you'd be able to share with us today that you're currently working on? Look, I think we've, uh, with the recent discussion or the recent agreement signed with between federal government and Singapore around a data sharing economy, I think we've got, you know, as local governments, we just sit on this gold mine of information. And I think it's critical now to set ourselves up to provide a, a little bit more currency associated with what data we're currently sitting on and who we share it with. Um, there's some great stuff the feds have put in place. We're working quite closely with, with Singaporean government around an ethical implementation of artificial intelligence. And we apply that to other technologies. So ethics and privacy are the two big ones at the moment and, and, and if other local governments around Australia are really concentrated um, effort in that space, I think we'll set ourselves up to have a really valuable currency in our data as local government and we can do that collectively. Um, so I think that's a really important shift over the next year or so and um, we've already progressed with, a, with an implementation uh, assessment framework which we've adopted from Singapore and, and working with federal government to look at how we can help other councils adopt that as well. So I think that's a, a really critical thing. As everyone's launching IOT and we're getting all this data and information, just make sure it's integral and make sure we wrap some ethics around it so it has a, a value associated with it when we want to share it. Otherwise, it's quite worthless. Um, mm. so I think that's a, an important push, an important thing to put on your, your whiteboard um, in your offices and start working towards a privacy and ensure we wrap it with some ethics associated with it and then we'll make sure we've got a, a pretty good currency moving forward collectively. Uh, but that's, yeah. for me, I think that's really important. 
Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Um, as, as you said, you know, we, we, we have all this data available to us, so we need to figure out the best way to utilise it and the best way to um, turn that back into something that our cities and communities can take advantage of. Um, absolutely. Thanks again, Josh, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, stay tuned. Um, watch this space for what City of Darwin are doing because there's obviously some really fantastic initiatives up there um, happening up there. So once again, thanks for joining us and we'll look forward to hearing more from Darwin soon. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure.